Have you ever wondered how you can get extremely high resolution, extremely crisp images from your camera? Well, there's a way to do that. It's really simple. So I'm gonna show you how to do that in this episode. Adorama TV presents Exploring Photography with Mark Wallace. Hi everybody, welcome to another episode of Exploring Photography right here on Adorama TV. I'm Mark Wallace here in beautiful Prague, the Czech Republic. It's a beautiful city and right behind me, you can't see it right over there, is actually the Prague Castle. Now the local authorities here have given me friendly reminders that I can't actually shoot video in the places where I took the pictures. They've been so helpful in that way, but I was able to sneak in a little small Garmin verb to show you how I did this. But trust me, back there is beautiful Prague and the river and the castle, and that's going to be the subject of our video today. Now what we're going to be talking about is how to get super high resolution images from your camera. Now it's really simple, all you're basically doing is shooting a panorama, but you're doing that maybe instead of shooting it horizontally only, shooting it in a pattern that's a square. Now to do this, normally when you shoot a panorama, you might take a, uh, your camera, hold it horizontally, because a panorama is horizontal, and you take maybe one, two, three, four pictures. But to get higher resolution images, the trick is really simple. Just take your camera and make it a vertical shot in portrait mode, and that way you're taking many more pictures. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, instead of maybe one, two, and three. So you're getting more information when you put those together and stitch them. And also when you take those pictures, you might wanna do one, two, three rows of pictures. And so then you're gonna be stacking those on top of each other, sticking those together in Photoshop. And so what you end up with is an incredibly high resolution image that you can zoom in and zoom out. It's pretty awesome. Now there's some things that you need to remember when you're doing that. The first thing is, because you're going to be taking pictures of different parts of the sky and the ground, if you leave your camera in auto exposure mode, well the exposure is going to be jumping all over the place and when you stitch those together, it's not really going to work out. So what you want to do first is meter the light in manual mode. So put your camera in manual mode. So in these, uh, I shot all of these at f8 and then I metered and I think I shot around 500th of a second, maybe a little faster because I was shooting handheld. And so then I was able to make sure that as I moved around, that everything stayed the same exposure. Now some area is gonna be a little bit darker, some gonna be lighter, but they're going to match. And that is what is important. Now the other thing that you have to make sure you do when you're taking these pictures is overlap by quite a bit. And so instead of just making big, broad movements, don't do that, make small movements. So take a picture, make sure that when you see something in your frame, that the next one, there's at least half of that overlapping that, and then half again, and half again. And then when you go down to the next level, again, half overlap a lot, that's gonna help Photoshop do its job of putting all these images together. And if you have to manually go in and tweak something, you'll have a lot of information to do that. Now the last thing you want to do is, you know, again, put it in manual mode, overlap your images. And the last thing is use a long lens. Now using a longer lens, this is a 135 millimeter lens, instead of a wide angle lens, that means you're gonna get smaller chunks that are closer, and so that's gonna create higher resolution because you have more information. So you're getting smaller pictures, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, you know, all of those instead of if you have a wider angle lens, maybe one, two, three, four pictures. So a longer lens is gonna help you out. A 200, a 300, a 135 millimeter lens, get those long lenses overlap. So to review, make sure your camera's in manual mode, make sure that you overlap quite a bit, and then third, use a long lens. Now to get all of this and put it together, first I'm gonna zip over here to this bridge, I'm gonna shoot some images, and then we're gonna go into Photoshop and I'm gonna show you how everything can be stitched together to make a high resolution, awesome image. All right, well, I'm done shooting all of my images. I'm gonna mention a couple of things. The first is I've shot the same scene several times just so I make sure that I have my exposure correct and I didn't mess anything up. Now, when you do that, you're gonna have a series of images. I've shot about 30 images in each series, so doing all of my overlapping and shooting. It's gonna be really difficult to know where one series ends and the next one begins if I don't have some kind of marker. So you can see here that there are these underexposed images that just sort of pop up on my, uh, in my thumbnails here. 
Now I did that because when I was done shooting my first series of images, I just pointed my camera to a dark wall and shot so it would be underexposed so I could clearly see when I got to Lightroom that this is one series right here, and then it stops, and this is the next series right here, and then it stops, and then I've got another series over here, etc. And so those are just some visual markers. They're really important. Don't forget to do that. You can shoot your hand. You can shoot maybe a picture of your foot. It doesn't matter what you take a picture of, just something that stands out in Lightroom so you know where to select and which images to select to export to Photoshop. Now to get these over into Photoshop, we can do that in two ways. If you have Lightroom, you can click on the first image and then shift and click on the last image of your series. Then you just need to right click and then you can say edit in merge to panorama in Photoshop. So that is what you want to do right there. Merge to panorama in Photoshop. Now when I click this, you're not going to see anything happen right away. And don't be startled by this. Along the way, you're going to see because these are such massive, uh, such a massive amount of information that when you click things, things don't happen right away unless you have a really powerful machine. Now, before I do that, speaking of performance, we need to make sure everything is ready to go on the Photoshop side. So in Photoshop, you need to have a scratch disk that has a lot of space. So I can go to my preferences and then I'm going to go to scratch disk. Now, when we take a look at this, you can see that I've got this uh, external two terabyte orange drive with about one terabyte of free space. That's about how much space you're going to need to do this. You need a lot of free space. My built-in hard drive on my laptop doesn't have enough space. I ran out of memory trying to do this uh, by using my normal laptop. And I don't want to use my photo hard drive because that's got all my photos on there. So uh, you want to have at least a terabyte of free space. Um, and we also want to use Photoshop because it's going to handle these large files better than Lightroom. All right, now you can do that through Lightroom or you can load these into Photoshop by going to File, Automate, and then choosing Photo Merge. You're going to get this little dialog right here that says Photo Merge, and then you can browse to your hard drive and select the files by hitting the first one hitting shift and then hitting the last one in the series and saying open. That's one way to do that if you don't have Lightroom. If you do have Lightroom to get to that same dialog, just select the first image in the series, hit shift, hit the last image in the series, right click, and then we're going to say edit in, and then we're going to go here to merge to panorama in Photoshop. So there it is. And when I click that, as I mentioned, Nothing's going to happen right away. So just be patient. Just sit back, maybe uh, play a game on your iPad, check in with friends on Facebook on a different computer. You want to make sure your computer has all of its resources available. Make sure you shut off everything except for Photoshop and Lightroom because this is going to take quite some time. When I say quite some time, I mean maybe an hour or two to do this entire process. Now, I'm not going to make you sit through an hour or two of just the screen churning, but trust me, this takes a long time. So we're going to wait for a second and let that dialog box pop up. Okay, this is finally popping up here on my computer. That took about 35, 40 seconds before this showed up. So uh, again, be patient. Now, what do we choose here? Now, it doesn't matter if you went through Lightroom or if you just directly went and browsed and pulled in those. So I suggest on the layout, you leave this to auto. That means that Photoshop is going to do all the work for you and it's going to get it right 98% of the time, which is really nice. The other thing that you need to make sure that you've selected is blend images together. Unselect all these other ones. If you want to go in the future and play with these and see all the things they do, go for it. In this video, we're just going to choose blend images together. That's going to create layer masks and it's going to well, I'll show you when we're done, but that's something that's really important to do. Now, once you're done with this, click OK. Once you've hit OK, what you need to do is just go make yourself a nice cup of coffee, maybe throw in some Netflix movies on a different computer, 
this is going to take a long time. I want to repeat, this is going to take a long time, maybe an hour, an hour and a half, maybe even two hours on a laptop. If you've got a nice workstation, it's going to take much less time than that. But if you're on a laptop or a computer that doesn't have a lot of RAM, a lot of hard drive space, a lot of memory, all that kind of stuff, well, this is going to take quite some time. So because I don't want to be bored to death, I'm going to let this go at a super fast speed. And then when all is said and done, I'll show you how to finish this using the wonderful magic of editing coming up in two seconds. Well, just over 40 minutes has passed and finally I have an image that I'm ready to start working on. Now, one of the very first things you're probably going to want to do is save the image. Now, when you do that, it's going to take a long time and you're probably going to get this error message saying that you can't save the image because it's too large. So you can't just say save in most cases. What you'll have to do is go to save as and then make sure instead of the Photoshop format, you need to choose large document format. Make sure you choose large document format and that will allow you to save those really large files and that will change that from a PSD to a PSB file then you can save your file and it will save these really giant uh, files like this. So I'm going to do that and once again it's going to take a little while so once you do that make sure you maximize compatibility say OK. Now it's time to go and grab another cup of coffee while Photoshop does its thing. All right well now that file is saved my computer took about 20 minutes to save that file. These things are huge and of course we want to make these smaller so we can manage them when we're editing. But the first thing you want to want to do is you want to make sure that Photoshop has done a good job of making sure everything is lined up. So if you open your layers panel, if that's not already open, you'll see all of your different images that you uh, imported here. They'll show up over here in the layers panel. Then you can sort of turn them on and off to see exactly how these things are blended together. So the next step in this process is you want to go and check the edges where these things are blended together to make sure that they're all blended correctly and if they're not you have to go into your layer mask to do some adjustments there. So I'll let you do that on your own but that's the next thing that you would do. After that's done of course you'll want to go in and crop out all this riffraff around the edges and then you can use that and make it to whatever print size that you want. Now the amazing thing about this is check this out right over here if I zoom in to 100% so right now I'm at 12% coming in there's 16% we're going to keep on going 33% 90% that's 50% there I'm going to keep on going just a little bit more you can see this is a huge file at 100% I can see right over here here's these two ladies one of them is shielding her eyes from the sun as she's talking to her friend that's how much detail you can see in these files so this little glob over here zoom in I can see a person talking back over here if I zoom in let's get in already to 100% I can see exactly how much it would cost to rent a boat so let me go over here along the river in fact I'm going to open up my navigation here and I'm going to zip over here there we go there we go so I've zoomed in just a little bit too much you can see at 100% I can see boat trips and tickets and this is Prague boats I can actually read the name of the boat company right here in this section of this image so these are really super high resolution images again I will go all the way out when I'm out at normal uh, on screen at 6% you can't even see that boat there's a little clock over here I was able to read so you can sort of navigate these and see exactly how they are and it's pretty wonderful it's not so complicated it's pretty easy to do it you just have a lot of patience because these files are so massive it'll take you a while now let me show you how I do the cropping on this I'll just take my crop tool I'm going to crop out everything that isn't inside this anything that's got jagged edges anything like that I'm going to get rid of that just like that get this guy right here come on down I'm going to make sure I delete the cropped pixels I'm going to get rid of them altogether so they're not in my file I'll say OK Photoshop's going to take a little bit of time here to crop that all 
All right, well, that took a little over five minutes, but once that's done, what you can then go in to do is you can go into your layers and then you can uh, click out this little flyout here and then you can flatten your image. So once you've done all of your cropping, you've made sure everything's blended correctly, you can flatten the image. And once that is going to do, it's going to get rid of all those layer masks, all of these layers, and it's going to make your image much more manageable. And once that's done, then you can start doing all of your image editing, adding your filters and using your camera raw filter, that kind of stuff, adjusting the tonality and contrast and making the image exactly what you want it to be. So once everything's there, you've got all the raw ingredients, then flatten the image after you've cropped it, then you can really start working on the image. Well, now that that's done, we have a much smaller image. It's going to be much more responsive and easier to work with. You can see that now I can go in here to my navigator and zoom in. It's not taking so long to zip around on the image. And that's really what you want to do. You want to get everything ready, situated, then you can crop things um, and then make this a flat image. It's only one layer. And you can see that I still have a super high resolution image. You can see over here, this little red square, that's uh, where I'm zoomed in and all of this image. And you can read the time on the clock of when I shot this. It's pretty crazy uh, how high resolution these images are when you're all done. But that's all there is to it. It's pretty simple. You just have to have some patience if you don't have a super fast computer because it will take you quite a bit of time to manipulate these huge images. Well, there you have it. It's not so complicated to stick all those into Photoshop, stitch them together, and get a really high resolution, amazing looking photo. Well, thank you so much for joining me for this episode of Exploring Photography. Don't forget to subscribe to Adorama TV. It's absolutely free and you get to see all kinds of people teaching you about photography and making videos and gear reviews, all that kind of stuff. So check it out. Also, look at the Adorama Learning Center. So everything we've done is there and it's all cross-referenced and you can leave comments. There's contests, there's all kinds of cool stuff and it's free. So why not do that today? Thank you again for joining me and I will see you again next time. Do you want great looking prints at low cost? Be sure to visit our easy to use online printing service. Adorama Pix has professionals who treat your images with the utmost care that you can count on. For a quick turnaround on photos, cards, or albums, use adoramapix.com.